pretty spectacular view, isn't it? Beautiful Atlantic Ocean, nice beach, palm trees. It's paradise, right? Everything you want living in Florida. But for most of us, you're not gonna get that view, or at least not be able to live next to that view, unless you live in something like this. Nice, modern, relatively brand new, multi-million dollar property. Beautiful ocean front views like this and living right by the ocean are only for the rich, right? Maybe not. But what if I told you there was a place where you could still live right by the ocean, walk up to the beach, and live in a house for around $400,000? One of the last remaining places in Florida. Would you believe me? Well, welcome to Briny Breezes, Florida. One of the last remaining places where you can actually live by the ocean in a home that's relatively affordable. And today we're gonna to talk about that and the history of this really unique place. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Never switch on the homies in the day once. They didn't wanna open. Hey everybody, I'm Palm Beaches Paul, your local South Florida realtor, and welcome back to my channel. So I'm sitting right here on the ocean front at the historic and very popular and unique Briny Breezes. The town of Briny Breezes is located between Gulfstream and Ocean Ridge, right along A1A, and it has a great history, and we're gonna talk all about that today. But um, as I said, it is one of the most unique places. There's actually one other place in Florida similar to this, and that's it. And this is your, your old school Florida modular home right here by the water i'm right on the ocean right here and uh, it is a really cool place but it's got a neat history and then we're also going to talk about the very cool surf shop that's right next door to it so uh, we'll go over all that and kind of talk about the history and everything so let's head over to i guess the city hall of briny breezes we'll start there and we'll talk about this community and the history it's a pretty cool story so you're going to want to stay till the end they have their own clubhouse up here which you can see they got showers and picnic areas got these beautiful big trees and uh and they got an actual sort of clubhouse right there with a gated entrance that you come into. And I even saw one guy drive his golf cart right up to it. So people are out here riding on their beach cruisers. One of the guys I talked to, Walt, he's riding a, a bicycle with his fly rods on it. I mean, it doesn't get more Florida than that. And uh, just that perfect example of living in paradise. And uh, I would definitely live here. Matter of fact, the wife and I actually looked at one of the units in the MLS just the other day. Um, but uh, one catch about this place, and we'll go more into it, but it's cash only, so there's no financing. But uh, we saw a unit for 400,000 for a two bedroom, and uh, it's pretty cool. So we'll, we'll cruise by and we'll kind of show you some of the units on the outside and go show you some of the other stuff around the city. But um, man, what a cool place, and, and it's been here, and there's a little uh, story we'll tell you about a little bit later where it almost wasn't here, but uh, thank God um, that didn't happen, and it's still here for these people to enjoy. All right, so let's talk to you a little bit about the history of Briny Breezes. As I sit here in what would be, I guess, the town square, it's kind of a neat little place. We've got a little place over here. I'm not sure what that is over there. And then over here, you've got uh, the Hobby Club, and you can see they've got all the different flags. There's a lot of Canadians that live here, um, people from all over, but you do get a lot of snowbirds who come down here. And, uh, and of course, they got a pharmacy and they got a civic center back up there so it's just a really cool place and a very unique part of florida but 
Let's tell you a little bit about the history of Briny Breezes. So as I said, Briny Breezes is situated right in between Gulfstream to the south, which is right before Delray, and Ocean Ridge, which is right there before Boynton Beach. And then in between there, you've got the intracoastal waterway to the west and the Atlantic Ocean to the east. So they are situated right dab smack in the middle of paradise, as far as I'm concerned. What's unique about it is it's believed to be the only oceanfront mobile home park in the entire state of Florida. Now, I think there's one other place that the article said might be somewhere in Florida, but I, I don't know where that is, but it is pretty cool. And as I said, it is right in front of the ocean, as you saw at the beginning of the video, where I was situated. So in 1913, Ward Miller left Michigan with his wife and they came down here and bought some land in what was Boynton Beach at the time. Actually, it was Boynton. Later became Boynton Beach and it's changed to Ocean Ridge and Briny Breezes. But originally it was Boynton. So in 1919, Mr. Miller bought 43 acres and he called it Shore Acres, which is the area we're over here. And he raised turkey and dairy cattle on the west side of A1A, which is pretty much where I'm at right now. During the Great Depression of the 1930s, he started to advertise that you could park your trailer on his land for $3 a week. And he would advertise that in some newspapers in the Northeast. So by 1937, there were 40 trailers here at Briny Breezes, and they separated from the city of Boynton Beach, which is now Ocean Ridge. Boynton Beach is over on the other side of the Intracoastal. And at that point, the people who were staying here, they got together and they made an offer to buy the land from the Millers. So in 1958, all the people living here pulled their money together at about $2,000 to $2,500 per lot, and they bought the Millers out for $1.5 million. And then in 1963, Briny Breezes became incorporated, and it's still that way today. Mm -hmm. beautiful view right so you can have a trailer on the ocean side or you can have a trailer over here on the intracoastal side either way you're winning the view is absolutely spectacular and what's really neat is there's I don't know where it is somewhere there's a church somewhere close by and every once in a while you'll hear the bell and I remember because I was showing these condos over here one time to somebody and I heard that bell and I said that is just a really nice sound it's just I don't know remind you of being in a little village somewhere but what a cool place. I just talked to some locals that live here and uh, they were asking what I was doing. And I told them I'm doing a nice historical piece on your community. And, uh, and I told them I'm not trying to promote it to, for sale and stuff like that. And I'll tell you why. So as you can imagine, Briny Breezes is located right in the middle of everything that's perfect. To the north a little ways, you got Boynton Beach and you can go over there downtown. You got two Georges, the water and all that. You know, if you got boats, you're right here on the Intracoastal Waterway. If you got a boat, you put it in the dock. You go up a short way and you're at the Boynton Beach Inlet. So that's perfect for all the fishermen and boaters. If you go south a little ways, you're in the very popular city of Delray Beach. You've got all your dining. And being that the road down there is, I think the speed limit is 35, you can legally take, um, don't, I'm not a lawyer or a police officer, but I'm losing my papers. You can take your golf cart if it's street legal and you can drive down to Delray. So um, I know because I'm looking into a golf cart one day for my wife and I, I want to have one, but it has to be under 45 miles an hour and obviously it has to be street legal. So, but, so it's located right in the middle of everything that anybody would ever want to live here in Florida. Um, so much so that it did catch the eyes of the developers back in 2005. So in October of 2005, a developer came in and made an offer to purchase Briny Breezes. He came up with the sum of $500 million. Now, at the time, many of the people who bought these Places here. By the way, it's a co-op, so you don't, it's kind of where you own shares in it. But the average cost that most people had paid was, you know, maybe forty to fifty thousand dollars. So at the time in 2000, the uh, the home values were sitting at about one hundred and twenty nine thousand dollars. Now, each of the four hundred eighty eight uh, members or residents of Briny Breezes would have made a huge sum of money had they accepted this offer which initially they did. They had 73% of the 488 people um, had voted yes, and they actually hired a lawyer to move forward with the sale. But it would have, it would have given them uh, a windfall of about a million dollars 
um, per person, which is great, right? It's like, take the money and run, but not so. And the developer even raised his price up to $510 million. But somewhere in the negotiations, they couldn't work out the due diligence period, I guess, with the, the town council and the developer, and the deal fell through. Now, I think some people were probably upset about it, but there were some catches to it from what I read. You wouldn't be getting the money for like two years, right? So even though you accepted it, it would take two years to get the money, and where are you gonna go live in those two years? Now, I don't know if that meant that they could stay here and then get the money, but I don't know, was, right? The developer would wanna start taking all these trailers out and leveling it and doing whatever he planned. But uh, it didn't happen. I'm happy it didn't happen. Some of y'all might not want to hear that, sorry. But I think this place is unique and cool in Florida, and we're losing more and more places like this every day, and uh, it never comes back. So money does not always buy everything or happiness. You see, they got a, they got a swimming pool over here, and they got shuffleboard across the street. Pretty active little place. And lots of golf carts. You gotta have a golf cart. Alright, so we're back over here by the ocean. And as you can see, we got the this side over here, you got Briny Breezes and you got the new, more modern ones over there. Um, those ones over there, I think when they were selling were like 2 million. I don't remember, it was a couple years ago. But what does it cost to live in Briny Breezes? Well, I'll tell you. So there's a couple of units available. There's three of them actually available right now. One I think is all the way back over by the water. And uh, I think they just passed something new that helps with the property value. I don't know exactly what it was, but there's something to do with the, the docks and all that. But uh, there's one over there that's almost priced at 800,000, which I thought was, that's a lot. But there's two, I think over here, um, one of them's 400,000 and another one's a little more than 400,000. One's like 475, and it's a one bedroom. But it's like, literally, if I come down here, it's like right back over there somewhere. So if like 475,000, you can have a one bedroom. And then the other one is a two bedroom, two bath, and it's just under 400,000. So now, as I said, it's a co-op, so you, you sort of own shares in it, um, but here's the catch, it's cash only. So as I said, my wife actually was looking the other day and she's like, hey, let's look at one for ourselves. And I was like, yeah, it'd be nice, but it's cash only. So there's no financing at all here. Um, and I have no idea about the insurance, but I will tell you, every person that I've spoken to making this video today has been absolutely amazing. Um, I just met a nice family from Minnesota. They were super nice. They're down here visiting their the, you know, the mom, and uh, she's had the property for a long time. Uh, some of the other ladies I spoke to, a nice gentleman that was out riding his bike and fishing. So it is a super cool, super chill community. And uh, I mean, if you're a cash buyer and you're looking for paradise, I would definitely come check this out. But so that is Briny Breeze, it's super cool, but we're not done yet. So as I said, there's surfing, right? We live down here, we have waves. My son surfs, there's some waves here. And there's a really cool, historic surf shop right at the end of the road called Nomad. And at one time, they were one of the biggest surfboard makers, not only here on the East Coast, but in the United States. And they had lots of champions. And what started out as a tiny little place in a gas station is now a world famous surf shop here in Briny Breezes. And we're gonna go down and check it out. Now, I don't surf, but I do land surf. So I ride my longboard down here. By the way, that two bedroom, two bath uh, for uh, just under $400,000 is 700 square feet. It's not huge. And the HOA for the community here is only about $358, so not too bad. I'm going faster than I normally go, so let's pray I don't wipe out. My wife's gonna kill me if I wreck on this thing. I'm 58, guys, I'm not a kid, but this is fun. We're making it. We're cruising. Look how awesome it is here.
So if you surfed, skateboarded, or just drove down A1A between Ocean Ridge and Delray any time between the 1970s and now, then you've heard of Nomad Surf Shop. It is a staple here in South Florida and one of the most well-known surf shops on the East Coast of the United States. In 1967, Ron Heaviside, after learning how to make surfboards in Delray Beach, got together with four of his buddies. They all pitched in about $250 and they bought a surfboard factory. They started a surfboard shop off Hypoluxa Road and they started making surfboards. Now, after they'd had some success in selling some of those boards, uh, they sold quite a few after that first year. Ron's dad, who owned a TV shop, which is right here in Briny Breezes on A1A, carved out a little space for him to have a retail shop. And that was the start of the legendary Nomad Surf Shop. So as you can see over the years, it has grown to much more now. It's a, a full-fledged operation here with a retail shop. And they got all sorts of clothes and everything you can get in here. Um, just great surf shop. But uh, you can see over here, you got the, the cool old car in the background here. And uh, so they were known at one time as one of the uh, premier surfboard makers on the east coast of Florida. And uh, they also had championship you know, surfers. They were in a lot of surfing competitions. They had surf competitions here in Boynton Beach. And um, it's just a, a legendary place that you know a lot of locals love and go to. Um, as a matter of fact, the reason I'm here is because my son's surfboard, he damaged it. And uh, my son's gotten into surfing and he's uh, learning and it's awesome to watch him do it. And, uh, but they do repairs here and they're one of the few places around who actually do repair surfboards. So uh, funny enough, they fixed a couple dings that he got in it um, like a month ago. Then he took it back out and he like ripped it, his, his, his uh, cord, his leash, um, ripped the back of the tail on it. So he had to bring it in here. But it wasn't that bad, it was like 75 bucks and they fixed it and I'm gonna pick his board up and take it back to him today. But just looking at this cool old car here, man, just kind of makes you want to think about back in the early days, what it was like here with the cool surf shop right by the ocean, right by these little modular homes on a ocean Avenue, just kind of cutting, doesn't get any more beachy and cool than that. Right. I mean, just a neat place, surf shop right here in the middle of paradise. time they were pumping out 40 boards per week here at Nomad and they were also wholesaling boards for surf shops from uh, Loud on A1A from Miami all the way up to New Hampshire so just a lot of really cool and a very neat place and a lot of history. So expanded to food and beverage they have a Nomad surf juice and coffee and when it's open they have drinks here usually on the weekends I assume but I've seen it when it's open and I'll have to stop by and uh, get some one day and they've actually gone into the Airbnb um, so the kids now run it, the sons now run the shop and uh, his wife and I met Ryan a while ago, he's really nice. And they actually have a really nice Airbnb that you can rent out back here as well. So I'll be sure to put a link on that. So if you want to come down here and check out the surf shop, do a little surfing, enjoy the beach and stay at the Airbnb, uh, I'll be sure to have a link for all that for you guys. So now I'm not part of the surfing community. I don't surf. I ride my skateboard. That's about it. I just never learned how to surf. and. I don't know, at my age, I don't know if I want to start trying, even though my son tries to get me to do it. But my son is surfing, my one son, and that's really cool, and he loves it. He's really into it, and he's just uh, practicing, trying to get better and better. Um, he's got a couple surfboards now, and it's awesome to see him out there enjoying the Florida lifestyle that we all love and enjoy here. All right, brah, surf's up. <laughs> I don't surf, I ride my longboard. I leave the surfing up to my kid. This is his board, we just got it fixed at Nomad. So. So that's my story today for you guys. That's uh, the history of Nomads, really cool surf shop. Um, you know, Ron built a legendary place and uh, unfortunately he passed away back in 2018, but they had a really cool ceremony for him. Um, obviously I'm not a surfer, I didn't attend, but I saw it in the news and everyone went out and uh, you know, out in the ocean and stuff and said goodbye to him. So, but it's just cool stuff like that. That makes me love Florida. And I like telling these stories better than any. Um, Briny breezes, how cool is that? You can be right here on the ocean if you surf, buy yourself a little place there, go surfing every day, go fishing like uh, Walter, the guy who I met riding around with his, uh, his uh, fly fishing reels. 
and riding a bicycle. I mean, how cool is that? So, but this is just part of Florida, a little bit that's left. Stuff like this is slipping away and I'm glad that it's still here to show for generations to see because I think Briny Breeze is, is super cool. And of course, Nomad's been an awesome surf shop that's been here and uh, it's neat. Like I said, you drive along A1A and it's situated right in the middle of paradise, right? Right in this little town next to some mobile homes. Just, you wouldn't even notice, you know, you might pass it, you didn't pay attention, but uh, it's a cool spot. So anyway, I hope you guys liked the video. Please be sure to subscribe, like all the good stuff. Keep following me for other stories about living here in South Florida. And uh, as always, no matter where you are in the world, get out and enjoy paradise. It's out there waiting for you. All right, we'll talk to you next week.